Um, I'd just like to run through the agenda. Uh, tonight we have uh, Highland Subdivision uh, request for amendment from Jeffrey Berman. Uh, we have the Aka Cisco School Change of Use uh, application and then the Golden Ridge Subdivision request for minor subdivision review, a um, review of completeness. Um, first, we need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Anybody's had a chance to look at that? We have a motion. So moved. And moved. Seconded. I'm sorry. This is for the minutes. I think there's one error in them. Okay. That I found. Um, sorry. On the second page, uh, there it, at the top it says, Mr. Griffin made the following motion for the board to consider. The motion was seconded by Mr. Cotter and carried five in favor and zero opposed. Well, if Mr. Griffin was here at the time, it should be six and none opposed. Because he was the one who was missing in the first vote. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, as amended, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Or are there any other amendments? So move them up. Anyone second? As amended? Second. All in favor? Thank you for pointing that out. That's helpful. Um, correspondence. Uh, let me just identify the correspondence we've received. Planning Commissioner's Journal, Fall 2003. Letter from L. Gould, Re. Berman Amendment. Memo from Public Works Director, Re. Golden Ridge Lane. Letter from M. Cronin, Re. November Workshop. Zoning News, October 2003. And then this evening we received letter from George Blair uh, regarding the Arca Cisco School. Letter from Daniel Foley regarding the Arca Cisco School. Letter from Northeast Civil Solutions regarding Golden Ridge development. Actually, it's a letter from Amy Powell, who is a uh, lot owner. It's just on the Northeast Civil Solutions letterhead. Copy of an email from Jim Fisher, again regarding the uh, Golden Ridge subdivision. A memo to the Planning Board from the Conservation Commission regarding the Golden Ridge subdivision. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the Highland Subdivision uh, request for amendment of Jeffrey Berman. Um, Mr. Berman, originally we had this as a consent item. However, since that time we received a letter, uh, a couple of letters from abutters. And given that and given that there is a slight change to uh, what we're looking at, if you could just briefly summarize the application and we can see if there are any further questions. Yep, come right up and identify yourself and give us your address and tell us what's up. Jeff Berman. I reside at uh, 16 Channel View Road, which is in the Highland subdivision in Broad Cove. And my proposal is to allow a fence to be constructed outside my building envelope, but within my property boundary and outside the wetlands on my property. Um, apparently, in the, in the covenant of uh, the Highlands, that activity was considered um, uh, something that had to occur inside the building envelope 
but that's uh, not generally the case in the rest of the town. So it was a little more restrictive than uh, the rest of the properties. Um, the, uh, the, the new information, uh, or I guess the new concerns that some of the, the abutters have, have brought about are, are fine with me. They have some concerns about constructing a fence on the southeasterly side of the, of the wetlands. Um, so they want to change the wording so that the fence could not be constructed on that side, which is, which is fine. Right, and, and as I understand it, the, the amendment you're looking for would apply to all of the homes in the, in the subdivision, correct? So right. that's why they wanted this, this right. change. Right, it would affect, um, I believe it's lots uh, 10 through 14. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions on this? Okay, we have a motion. Barbara? I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider findings of fact. One, Jeff Berman of 16 Channel View Road is requesting an amendment to the Highland Subdivision Plan to allow fencing to be installed outside the building envelope, which requires review under section 16-2-5 amendment to a previously approved subdivision. Two, the original subdivision layout included substantial areas of wetlands within the boundaries of the lots. Three, the application substantially complies with section 16-2-5 amendment to a previously approved subdivision. Therefore be it ordered that based on the plans materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jeff Berman to amend the Highland subdivision plan to allow fencing to be installed outside of the building envelope be approved with the following conditions. That no fencing be installed southeasterly of the wetlands located on the south of the homes on lots 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Second. Okay, um, just Maureen, should that read located south of the homes? Ready, agree to that change? Take out the on. Yeah. Take out the on, yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry, the, the condition number one, I think it's supposed to read located south of the homes as opposed to on south of the homes. Okay, with that change, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Okay, opposed, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the request by the Arco Cisco Learning Center uh, for a change of use. Um, the applicant can come up and give us a summary of the application, especially regarding any new information. Uh, good evening. Hi, I'm Barbara Melnick. I am the director and owner of the Alka Cisco School of Learning Achievement Center, and um, we're here to request our final approval tonight for a uh, change of use from the current uh, Lutheran Redeemer Church to uh, school use. Uh, we, we are a small private school and after school tutorial program uh, for students who need extra help. Speak to the changes. Okay. Okay. Good evening. My name is Pat Carroll. I'm a landscape architect with Carroll Associates. Um, unless Barbara wants to be the pointer, I'll uh, move her out of the way. But uh, basically the plan that was submitted two weeks ago to you for this uh, public hearing tonight is essentially the same plan that, was, that you've seen previously. There were some minor changes, there were some minor modifications that were discussed at the last planning board meeting and are um, included in the, in the latest round of plans. And I'll briefly run through those for you. Uh, on the existing conditions plan, the town engineer had requested that we Add an existing storm drain that that is in Spurwink Avenue, and we have added that 
drawing, that's HC1. Um, it's shown out there, and uh, that that culvert, and there's a catch basin that picks up some drainage from from on the site. Um, it's actually located located right here. That is all intending to to remain as part of this project. Um, on the site plan, we've added some additional setback information that that he requested, um, and some some. Uh, dimensional requirements as far as uh, parking and spot grades and so forth. Um, we've added a couple of details regarding, there was a inadvertently left off a detail for the uh, wood screen fencing around the dumpster area that's been added. Here we're showing a, a solid wood uh, screen on, on three sides. Uh, that will close that area. Um, and. Um, at the time that we submitted two weeks ago, we were showing, and I know this has been back and forth several times, but um, we've got an issue here with, with water as far as utilities go. And that there's an existing one-inch service that serves the building. And in our initial um, request from Portland Water District, we received some information that said that the water was out in Spurwink Avenue. And we thought it'd be a very easy um, upgrade to go to two-inch line, and that would therefore uh, provide the the capacity needed for sprinkling this building. And so we, we made that change, and uh, and then in the meantime, the contractor started researching and, and uh, discussing this a little bit more with uh, Portland Water District and Public Works. And we come to find out that actually the water line comes out off of Route 77 here, and it comes between these two residences. So there is really no water service in Spurwink Avenue. So we looked at several options, uh, one being to, to extend a main up from Route 77 up to the site, another being there's about 150 or 200 feet down Spurwink. There is water service. We looked at extending that down and finally came to the conclusion that we could handle the, uh, the storage requirements for the sprinkler system if we put a tank inside. So that's our proposal now is we're going to leave the one inch water line as it is. It's going to feed the project. It's more than enough capacity to, to handle the domestic needs. And uh, we're proposing a, a 2,500 gallon tank to be located inside the building uh, that will serve a, a, the Hydro Pro sprinkler system for the building. So the other option we actually looked at was we could, we could actually go through and meet code, fire code, not having a sprinkler system by uh, changing some window sizes and adding kind of uh, uh, certain walls in different locations and so forth. But uh, we think that, that this solution really is the most cost effective and it provides the, the service that we need and it causes minimal disruption to the, uh, to the existing streets and utility systems. Um, we actually, on, on the landscape plan, uh, the town engineer had requested that we add some planting details and tree protection details. Those are shown on sheet L3. Uh, minor change that we've, that we've incorporated in this latest set of plans is originally we had, uh, on the site lighting plans, we had eight light fixtures shown, eight pole lights shown coming in, basically lighting this parking lot. Um, throughout here. And in looking at that from a budgeting point of view, um, that was a big ticket item and, and uh, the school is under a limited construction budget on this. So we sent that back to the electrical engineer and he's come back with a revised site lighting plan, which was included in your package, uh, that now has five, five poles, uh, two in these islands, and then three uh, located in this part of the site. Uh, but there are actually seven fixtures. The two poles here are taller poles. These are on 20 foot high, and they have double fixtures on them. So they basically accomplish the same photometrics that we were looking at trying to safely light this parking lot, uh, but doing it with several less poles. So we've been able to save some, some money there. Um, we, we also included, uh, for your information, an updated traffic study by Bill Gray. Bill um, initially had uh, done his traffic study based on 36 students, and, um, and um, 
it was noted by Maureen that we're actually proposing up to 45 students in here. So he went back and updated his traffic study based on 45 students. And um, the conclusions of the study are really the same. Uh, the intersection at, uh, at uh, Route 77 in Spurwing still remains a level B service, which is actually a very good level of service for that intersection. Uh, you can see on page uh, two of his study um, that uh, the existing and post-development AM and peak hour uh, traffic at that intersection, very, it, there's a very minimal change in, in the uh, uh, amount of delay. In the morning, it's from 12.2 seconds to 12.7 seconds, so it's really a half a second delay. And in the evening, it's about a second delay. So. Um, Bill feels pretty strongly that uh, the traffic at that intersection is uh, is good and will remain good once this project is, is underway. Um, he did make several other recommendations. Um, actually, one other recommendation, and that is that the site distances looking to the east up Spurwink Avenue in this direction here were somewhat um, restricted due to some tree growth in here. And so our proposal is to come in and do some clearing and, and pruning of trees along the property line. It's basically within the right-of-way along Spurwink Avenue in this location. So uh, by doing that, we're able to meet the, uh, the minim minimum uh, site distance requirements. And, um, and he feels pretty comfortable with that. Um, there are a couple of items that have that have come up since we made this submission a couple weeks ago. And we came in and talked to Maureen about this on Friday. And um, really, one of them relates to what we were talking about earlier with the, uh, the sprinkler system and the need for an internal uh, storage tank. Uh, the second is, is a minor modification to the, to the architecture. Both of these are minor modifications to the architecture. And I guess what we'd like to do is present those tonight to you. I know that they're not anything that you've really reviewed, but uh, they're two minor modifications to the building. Initially, we had talked that, that all, the, all the renovation work was going to happen inside the building. And now, because of the need to accommodate this large tank, which is like 9 feet by 9 feet by 7 feet tall, uh, we're looking at a small building addition off of the southeast corner of the site, or the building. And then um, this is an area that's actually underneath covered roof here. It's an open covered porch area. And um, lately, Barbara has been thinking that it would really be nice to have an enclosed vestibule so that when people are coming and going from the school, um, that they're not opening the door and, and cold air, especially in the winter time, the school. So the, in the intent here would be to just enclose that covered porch area. Here, there's actually a covered porch area that was part of an entry that was going to be closed off. Uh, we're looking at enclosing that and actually squaring off the building here. This addition here is about 120 square feet. This addition here is about 60 square feet. So we're looking at a total of about 180 square feet of building addition, of which only about 50 square feet of that would be new roof. So the rest of that would all be basically filling in underneath an existing uh, roof area here. So um, we think they're very minor additions. We've got building plans and elevations, photographs we can show you if you're so interested, if you want to get into that in detail. But uh, we'd like you to consider this as, a, as part of the approval tonight. Um, I guess there is another option that we could, we could, you could approve the plans as submitted, and then we could come back next month with with an amendment to the plans. Uh, we'd really like to, to get this project underway and get construction going this fall. Um, so if we can, if there's any way that we can get approval for, for this plan with these small minor modifications to what was submitted, uh, we'd appreciate that. So I think with that, uh, that pretty much sums up the changes that have been made. Uh, we think it's a good plan. It, it, Fits the site. We're doing very minimal uh, site work, actually, just to kind of rework some of the circulation in here. We're preserving all the, the existing vegetation on the site, and we're adding uh, some vegetation around the building. And but primarily, the 
the major landscape impact is going to be in adding these islands in the parking lots and breaking up those parking lots with landscaping. Uh, we're not intending to, to clear any of the wooded area on the site. Uh, we think it fits pretty well and uh, it's a good use for this building and uh, I guess with that we can open it up to any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I think now we'll open up the public hearing and then we'll come back and discuss the application. So um, open the public hearing. If there's anyone that would like to speak on this application, please come up to the lectern and identify yourself and say where you live and we'd be happy to listen. Anyone? Okay. Close the public hearing. Any questions for the applicant? David. I have one quick question. But the sketches that we have presently in front of us do not show the layout of the two additions, two changes. No, they don't. This just happened actually last Friday, so oh. last Thursday, and we came in and met with Maureen on Friday, and I think your packets had already been sent out. Right. Um, but we do we do have plans and elevations at a larger scale that we could show you if, if you're so interested. Okay. Thank you. You, you do have something that, that we could look at? Uh, might be useful. What's that? Can we do it now? Yeah, I think. Okay. That would be a good idea. Okay. We'll let David uh, Matero from Stephen Boy Architects talk about these two little additions. And, uh... Uh, again, uh, David Matero, I'm an architect of Stephen Boy Architects. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, existing one-inch water line, as Pat said, that, that comes in, we think through here, we don't really know this, this is our best guess in working with Public Works and with Portland Water District. Uh, a couple of um, just revisions from what, what Pat has said. The way to handle this is to install a 2,100-gallon water tank. What that does is it, is it pumps in water from the domestic water, it holds it in an area, and then in case of an emergency or a fire, that 2,100 gallons is released in a minimum number of sprinklers, I think up to four. And they can pump uh, about 20 minutes worth of water through the sprinkler, enabling, uh, for the most part, it usually takes care of the fire, enables the fire department 20 minutes to get, to get here to uh, uh, response time. Uh, this is usually done for our rural schools that don't have a, a, a city, a water system. In this case, uh, it's sort of like that because we don't, as pets, we don't have water around here. And although there is water on Ocean Avenue, uh, there's a five-year moratorium on digging o Ocean Avenue because that was just completed as a uh, DOT project. So our proposal is to add that 2,100 gallon water tank right here. The existing building. There's, a, there's currently an entrance into that corner with an overhang to that roof. This is currently a little kitchen. We, our original proposal was to turn this into a mechanical room because what, we do know that water does come into this building. We don't know where it's from, but we do know it comes in here. We would utilize this as, a, as our mechanical room. That was our original proposal right here. However, this tank is actually seven feet diameter and seven feet high. And it can't go anywhere up high because extremely heavy. So our thought was that we could we could put it right here. It's already got the cover. Uh, we would need to enclose that room. So our proposal is to notch, is to get rid of this notch, bring the walls over. The roof currently is about right here, and we would just have to add that amount of roof, and the siding would match the existing siding. Uh, the uh, other uh, proposal is this vestibule, which is located right here, is again currently under a roof. We would just uh, take from this post, go right into this wall, and 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 complete this notch with a airlock vestibule. So again, the siding would match, the windows would match, and that would be right here. So our 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 original proposal two weeks ago did not have either one of these additions. So this is showing the new addition. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the only roof change would be on the area where the tank is? 
Yes. It's going to be. <clears throat> yeah. It would. Um, what we would do actually is the roof would come would, would continue down right to here. That would continue down, and we just do that straight. So that that metal roof would just continue straight, and this would be this would be wall right here matching that siding. Other questions? <coughs> yeah, Barb. I'd just like to make one point because we did have two letters about the traffic and concern about the traffic. Uh, we had two letters from two abutters that were concerned about a school going into the building. And I would just like, <coughs> from my standpoint, and see how the rest of the planning board feels, to say that I thought your traffic study was very comprehensive, and given the size of the school, I understand the abutter's concern, but given the size of the school, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any effect at all. But I think we need to have that be of some record. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, as far as the <clears throat> the modifications, the recent modifications go, I, I certainly wouldn't have any trouble incorporating those tonight. I guess my only question, Maureen, is are they shown or is there something in enough detail so that whoever needs to know the details, code enforcement or whatever, can, can do that later on? I'm assuming there's a plan you could leave with me tonight. We can leave this plan. I think if, as long as there was a condition on the board's approval that, that the backup materials would be submitted, um, that there shouldn't be any problem with approving it with these additions. Okay, you can do that. It's really so that, you know, so there's something to go by in the future. But I would never problem with that. What, what backup materials would we request? Well, I'd like, I would like them to submit a new site plan that that shows the, the changed footprint. Any, any plan that you've already submitted that would have been changed by these additions should be revised and resubmitted. Yeah, I think what we'll do, we'll resubmit the uh, site plan, the landscape plan, the site electrical plan, um, and the architectural plans that all show that. So right. you'll have that as an updated uh, set of documents. And I did meet with them, the applicants on Friday, and they were expecting that they were going to have to wait another month and we talked about that and I did suggest to them that as an option they could very clearly present to you what they wanted to this evening and, and leave it up to the board to decide whether you were willing to do this. Okay. okay. I'll just start off and say I'm pleased with the changes and I can live with them without going any further than tonight. Okay. Same for me. All right. Agreed. I'd like okay. to propose a motion. Go ahead. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. The Acasisco School is requesting site plan review of a change of use of an existing building located at 126 Furwink Ave from a church to a school, which requires site plan review and a conditional use permit. The application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-5-5D conditional use standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Acasisco Learning Center for site plan review to change the use of the building located at 126 Perrink Avenue from a church to a school be approved with the following condition. One, that new submittal documents be provided detailing building changes presented at the November 18, 2003 planning board meeting prior to the issuance of any building permit. I'll second that. You okay with that? I, yeah, I, we may want to say building and landscape or site changes. There's something with lighting, I believe, that's different. I think you said submittal documents, which I would interpret as okay. any document that has to be revised to show this would be resubmitted. All right, that's fine. So it covers everything. Okay, do we, did we have a second? Yes. We did. All those in favor? It's approved. Thank you. <coughs> Maureen, do you want this tonight? Mm, it's unusual. 
what's over yeah. here. Okay, the next item on the agenda is application uh, K&K Realty um, requesting minor subdivision review of a three-lot subdivision located on Golden Ridge Lane. This will be reviewed for compliance with 16.2-3 minor subdivision review. Just remind the board that we uh, first have to make a determination of completeness on the application. Um, once we rule on that one way or the other, um, then we can move on to a substantive discussion if it's deemed complete. So with that said, uh, Mr. Fisher, welcome. And if you can give us an update and summary of the project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Jim Fisher from Northeast Civil Solutions. Sure. Civil Solutions. We're here representing k, &K Realty and uh, Jeff and Vicki Kennedy in our request for uh, preliminary approval to the minor uh, three-lot subdivision located off Golden Ridge Lane. What you have before you in your packets is a uh, set of rather busy plans. So what I'd like to do uh, relative to the color scheme over here that I've simplified things is orient you toward this plan, uh, walk you through it just a bit, and then uh, uh, address some of Maureen's comments uh, regarding the submission and then open to uh, any comments or questions that you may have. And ultimately, we would like to be able to uh, leave with uh, preliminary approval this evening. What I'd like to do, you see before you uh, two different plans, uh, the match line that's on here. I'm going to refer primarily to the, uh, the colored copy uh, and orient you to a little bit as to what we're looking at, and then uh, go from there as far as answering any questions that you may have. What we have is an area uh, in this uh, section that is uh, a compromise or, or comprises uh, approximately 15 acres of property. We propose three different lots to be, uh, ex uh, be created at the end of Golden Ridge Lane. In this section down here, this is Route 77, Bowery Beach Lane. This is the, um, the ice cream, small ice cream parlor that's uh, located right at uh, the uh, apex of Two Lights Road, which is in this section. Golden Ridge Lane is currently a private way. It comes uh, and extends approximately 600 feet back as you see it here. Uh, what we're proposing is uh, this three-lot subdivision, this being one of the lots identified now as lot A, lot B, and then the remaining lands, which are now identified as lot C. The match line here corresponding to the match line here, and this is the rest of the property. You may, uh, some of the members of the board may recall oh, about uh, a year and a half ago, we were here on a, um, on a workshop for a private access way. That, uh, for a variety of reasons, was changed. We withdrew that application, and we actually submitted then for a minor subdivision relative to these three uh, contiguous lots. There are several issues at hand here regarding the minor subdivision. Uh, and of course, we're open to uh, discussing any of them at whatever length the board would like to do. 
As far as uh, geographically is concerned, with the orientation of the road here, with these three lots, we also have a um, portion of the green belt that links to the, the Great Pond Trail, which is about a half a mile back this way. Uh, that trail is currently located in this section and comes up in the light green that you see here, connects to the Sprague property, which is an abutter to our lot back in this section, and then uh, links up to the trail as it goes back toward the Great Pond area. What we're proposing, or one of the things that we are proposing, is to relocate this trail from this particular section right in here to this section right over here, and then have it connect uh, onto the spray glands as it does now and continue to, uh, to go on back to Great Pond. As far as the orientation for color is concerned, you can see the lots as we've outlined them in red. The uh, light green is the existing trail. The darker green is our proposal for the relocation of the Greenbelt Trail. The blue in this particular section is a 30-foot uh, wide drainage easement. The wetlands are identified, or the edge of the wetlands are identified by a lighter blue line, in this case, over in this section, and then the area over in here, which corresponds to this section, as it's uh, shown. The yellow areas are those that are the building envelopes for uh, Lot A and Lot C. Uh, lot B already has a house on it. That was actually the, uh, the former Pickering Estate and Pickering House. Uh, before that was then, um, the entire property at that time was then sold to K&K Realty. The darker lines, as you see on here, are the, uh, the soil's boundaries. What I'd like to do is, uh, in conjunction with our submission, is run through a couple of the comments that uh, the planner has uh, given to us and to you. Um, we do have a letter that uh, the chairman that uh, acknowledged earlier from um, Amy Powell, who is the owner of this property and uh, the party uh, for purchasing this property, Lot A. Uh, we've also contacted the Youngs who own this house in this section right in here. And uh, we will provide you with that letter. I uh, spoken with uh, Leslie this morning, and uh, she and uh, her husband have uh, indicated that they would provide us with a letter as well, just acknowledging that their lot is indeed part of uh, our plans for this subdivision. We don't have that letter yet. On um, Marine's comments, the, uh, the second section, which is 3C, it talks about the, uh, the building envelope for remaining lands. We had uh, indicated, and on your plans, you'll see it is identified as remaining plans. We have changed that to uh, reflect lot C as opposed to just uh, remaining land. So that's the third of the envelopes, uh, and, or a third of the lots. And we've also indicated uh, all the way around all of these properties the actual building envelopes as you see them, and they are on this particular plan. As we submit this information for final approval as well, you will see the plans that are before you that have this uh, information that I'm discussing right now. There was also a question that Maureen had regarding a, uh, uh, a portion of the town's plans that had a uh, portion of the BA zoning district. It was actually located in, the, and as you see it on your plans, it was located in this section right here. Maureen made the note that uh, as far as RP2 wetlands are concerned, that a BA district would not typically be located in that wetland area. Uh, absolutely no objection to that. We don't intend to do anything, and, and the plan shows that we don't have anything to do with that wetland area and are going near it, uh, as far as our proposals are concerned. This larger wetland, as you can see here, with the match line that corresponds into this section, is part of Lot C. And uh, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. And Mrs. Kennedy, would like or propose to uh, to build a house that they will come to the, uh, the codes officer later on and for the permit for that back in this section where the septic field is located. So as you can see, coming down Golden Ridge Lane. This is the area of the, uh, the RP2 wetland area, and the, uh, the actual BA zone is uh, no longer on there. We've eliminated that. And that's fine, absolutely fine with us. The, uh, the plans that you have before you, uh, a portion of that, the, the boundary in the topographic section is actually part of the uh, private access way uh, submission from before. We have actually shown on these plans now that you see before you uh, all the topography uh, is existing on here. You should have had that before, and, and I apologize for that. That was our omission. Um, but we do show that now. This is the topography across the entire lot. Also, I had a question about the bearings and distances for the closure on this property. And uh, there, too, we had surveyed this property about two years ago and uh, had uh, submitted when lot A was actually being broken out, put all the bearings and distances on that lot. And uh, we had broken lines because the, uh, at the time that we had originally submitted this, we had tried to put everything onto one plan set. And it just got so large or so filled with data 
that we then expanded it under the second plan set. Hence, you'll see the bearing that's on your plans that actually comes up with the broken match line. In this case, just for ease of clarity, uh, we've actually put both things on the, on the two separate lots and we've run the bearings and distances along here on uh, all of these lines. Uh, that was done a couple of years ago and we've got that on the plans now. Uh, that addresses 6B, 7, and 9 as far as the, the topographic contours as well. Uh, I'd be very happy to discuss with the board any uh, questions or concerns or comments that you might have regarding the RP1 and RP2 wetlands. Uh, there, we have uh, delineated the wetlands on the property. They are not delineated as RP1 wetlands. Um, there are no, uh, uh, there's no standing hydrology out there, uh, but I'd be certainly welcome to, uh, to entertain your comments toward that. What, what was the delineation based on? The, the, the delineation was right. based on three factors. Uh, we took a look at the uh, hydrology in that area, the standing water, in other words, or, or what's the propensity of the soils to be able to contain water, uh, the get your foot wet test, as it were. Uh, there is no specific hydrology other than after a, a major storm event, obviously. Uh, also, the uh, uh, plant life that is in that particular area, uh, indicative of facultative, facultative wet, those plants that tend to have a propensity to grow in wetland areas, and then uh, facultative upland areas. Uh, to separate that out as well, and then the uh, hydrogeological strata, meaning the soils testing. Uh, are there actually hydric soils in that area? That is the uh, the most concise, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the most concise way of being able to determine uh, actual wetland areas. And uh, we took several samples throughout this entire area, both upland and where we show the, uh, the upland edge of the wetland area, uh, as far as the, uh, the soils content as well. So we described it in three different ways, or identified in three different ways. We also have um, we submitted, uh, along with your packets, the initial test data, soils test data, that shows the test bits for the two areas that were tested on lot A, which is in this section right in here, and lot C, which is right up in here. Uh, we do actually have the plans that uh, we had submitted to, uh, to Marine today um, for the, uh, the actual designs of the test bits, or excuse me, the designs of the septic systems themselves. Uh, so you do actually have the designs in addition to the uh, uh, the test bit data that's completed by the registered soil science scientists. And then the, the last of our official comments regarding uh, financial capability. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is working on that with, uh, with my, the uh, town manager, and uh, we'll be getting back to you on that in conjunction with final approvals. Or you did have a couple of informal notes as well, or, or uh, notes that were not uh, issues of completeness. That is changing the references to the access way, to the roadway as a matter of semantics, but we have done that. Uh, that is, uh, you'll see in my narrative for closing report, as it were, for the final, uh, we will no longer refer to access way uh, or the roadway as an access way. It is indeed a private road in conjunction with the subdivision. Okay. Um, on issues of completeness, Maureen, I guess my first question would be, since we haven't, at least I haven't seen all the things that were submitted today or after uh, the last submittal, what in this list of items has now been addressed and what hasn't? Well, the, just so the board is aware, the plans that you have before you, I haven't seen yet either. So okay. nothing has officially been submitted other than what you have in front of you tonight. So you, the plans that you originally had, plus the photocopy of the HHE 200 forms, which came in today, are the only things that we have. So okay. um, on this list, setting aside what's up on the board, uh, the only thing that I would take off this list is the HHE 200 designs. Everything else still um, has not been submitted. Assuming I had those plans, we still have two items that are still missing. Uh, and one is right title and interest for lot B. We still have no evidence that the owners of Lot B, which are being included as part of this subdivision, are participating in the review of this. Uh, and that, that's a pretty heavy, that's a pretty serious requirement. Usually we, you don't review property unless the property owner has agreed to it. Um, and the second thing is I did contact the town manager this afternoon, late this afternoon, around 3 o'clock, and he still had had no conversation whatsoever with anyone regarding financial capability for K&K &K Realty. John. I just have a couple of clarification questions for lot A and B. 
did I hear you say correctly that you have a purchase and sale agreement for lot A? Uh, there is a, there's a land contract for lot A, yes. Okay, and, and what's the status of lot B? Uh, all, all I heard was there was going to be a letter consenting to the inclusion. Are you, is yeah. that under agreement as well? The lot B has been sold to the Youngs. The Youngs have owned that for a year, possibly. The applicant? Uh, no, the applicant of the candidates. The Youngs who own this, this property right here and this house, the former uh, Pickering house, purchased that property approximately a year ago. But we need their consent. When you, when that was that sold out of the applicant's title? Yes. And did they reserve the right to include that in the in this subdivision, or we simply? Well, typically, any any property that is created in less than a five-year period. Right. Okay. Yep. Mr. Chairman, just as a point of clarification, I, I think the applicant has mentioned a couple of times about a preliminary ap approval. It's my understanding on a minor subdivision there is only completeness and final approval. Is that true, Maureen? There's not an, an intermediate step? Correct. So um, speaking personally, I certainly do not feel like there's an, enough information before us to review um, for final approval. And truthfully, uh, I feel that with the number of deficiencies that were identified in the town planner and the town engineer's review and the fact that those the town departments and the town engineer haven't had a chance to review the new submissions. Um, I don't see how we can even find completeness tonight, particularly given the the uh, level of concern raised by the Conservation Commission about the Greenbelt, which I know is going to be a major issue for discussion as we go through this. And rather than spinning our wheels for a long time, uh, I'm, at a, I'm at the point where I think we need to send it back. I can certainly address some of those issues regarding the Greenbelt. Well, I guess I'm... I'm thinking that we shouldn't hash that out at the planning board. That would be something that's worked through and agreed to prior to this point because we only, we're supposed to be taking the final look at it, not helping you decide where it goes. I'm uh, getting some conflicting evidence toward that end. Because, How so? Well, as I understand, well, do we, should we address this issue at all? Well, I, I guess let me suggest, as, as Andy correctly points out, we're, the first thing we have to determine is completeness. Um, whether there are completeness issues regarding the Greenbelt issue, I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't think we need to get into the merits of moving the Greenbelt until we address, obviously, the, the completeness issue. So um, if anyone else wants to address the completeness issue, uh, we should do that first. Anyone have any other questions or comments on completeness? I guess I'm confused because in your submission it says 16 acres, but I can't find three of them. One lot is eight acres. Just for my own clarification, I like to know what I'm looking at. One is two acres and one is three acres, and that adds up to 13 acres. That uh, the acres that you actually see on your plans does not include the roadway, which actually, is that three acres. The roadway? Uh, no, it's not quite three acres. It's rounded up to 16 acres. It's a little over 15. Really? Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments on the completeness issue? I guess I would join Mr. Charles in the, in the concern when plans aren't before the, the staff, um, it makes it difficult for us to, to review them completely I appreciate the complexity of, of these issues and these plans, uh, but it's difficult just sitting here from this distance to, to determine everything that needs to be determined on this uh, checklist. And it, it certainly helps the planning staff to be able to review those things and discuss it and discuss it with you for that matter and then come to us with something that's a little more... Um, definitive. Uh, the other issue, again, as Mr. Charles pointed out, there's completeness and then there's uh, a final, final approval, um, which makes this a little bit more um, necessary that we have, obviously, have everything before us. Maureen, do we, 
Do we have the opportunity to have a public hearing on this? Yes. And a site block if yes. we so desire? Um, okay, but before we get to that, I guess we do need to determine the issue of completeness before we move on. So unless anyone has any other questions or comments on that issue, um, we should uh, make a determination on that. So is there a motion? I'd like to offer a motion. Um, may I make a comment before the motion is voted? Sure. Regarding the, uh, the issue of completeness, and obviously we will uh, subscribe to whatever the board uh, determines, nothing on the plan is changed from what you have, what you see, as far as the physical boundaries and what have you, the contours. Uh, you do not have the specific contours on the portions of the, on the entire portions of the plan that are here. Uh, they are shown on this plan. The levels of those contours, because we're not proposing any further development, really isn't going to change. The town engineer as well has indicated that as far as the only changes that we're proposing, which are a slight widening to the existing road itself, does have all the contours. He has agreed with our engineering as far as the stormwater management is concerned. You're absolutely right. You don't have the specific contours across the entire section. But those won't really do anything because we're not proposing to go there. We're just showing them. Uh, we have done that on the plan. I do understand that you don't have them before there for you. Uh, but that doesn't really change the essence of the plan. We also had some comments about the specific bearings and distances, particularly in this section of the plan over here. We have included those bearings and distances, but the property hasn't changed from what you have before you, it's the exact same thing. It isn't going to change. Uh, as far as the VA district, uh, we've eliminated that. That wasn't really our call, and to be very honest, it doesn't matter to us because we're not going there either. So as a point of clarification on behalf of the town, uh, with our on-site wetlands analysis, we have eliminated that VA district so it no longer affects our particular section of property. The RP1 and RP2 wetlands, we can certainly discuss that, but that is more of a board nature than anything else. That's nothing that you can't submit anything else toward that end unless you would like to see further studies of that or something. Uh, but that entire area is listed both on the town's maps and as the result of our uh, soils identification as uh, RP2 wetlands. You do have the HHT 200 forms for the actual subject design. You do not have the financial capacity letter. I understood that that was in conjunction with final approval. Uh, and the only thing that, uh, the only other thing that we, do, we do not have is the letter from the Youngs uh, that state acquiescence to uh, their agreement with us. Uh, I won't hold you to anything, certainly. I did speak with uh, Ms. Young today, uh, sent her that letter, and uh, she indicated she was going to try to get that over here this evening, but obviously was not able to do so. Uh, so from the perspective of the way we're looking at it, is that uh, from a completeness issue, we don't have the letter from the Youngs. And uh, other than discussing the situation regarding the wetlands, if you choose to do so, uh, that, in essence, is, uh, is all we need. So as far as no changes are concerned, um, I would submit that uh, while we will certainly have this in conjunction with the final approval, nothing that you see before here, before you hear, uh, given that the road is really the biggest issue as far as the only changes that we propose to make to this area, uh, everything else is done, and you do have it before the uh, before you get Certainly, we'll acquiesce to the board's thinking. And we'd have to discuss the green belt issues if you'd like to do that. And I, I actually do need a point of clarification from the board then, because this is somewhat of conflicting evidence that we've been given here. On, on the green uh, okay, well, we, we may or may not reach that tonight. Um, first, we have to determine the completeness issue. I guess what I would say, either way, on that, we, we're certainly not in a position to give final approval tonight. So this is going to go, this is going to go over till the next meeting anyway. And we'll either deem it complete tonight and wait till the next meeting to, to look at final approval or if it's deemed incomplete tonight, we'll go to the next meeting, hopefully deem it complete, and still look at the final approval. So all I'm saying is in terms of timing, I don't think it's going to have an effect. Is that right, Maureen? Okay. What happens if we decide we need a sidewalk? 
I mean, I think there are enough well, questions we can, about wetlands that we're going to need. Well, we can certainly make that determination. Normally, we do that before the next meeting, though, obviously, so that wouldn't wouldn't delay anything. <coughs> Dave, did you have a comment? Well, I, I just would concur that it doesn't do us any good to, even if we deem it complete tonight, we can't discuss it because the town engineer hasn't reviewed these plans as we see them in front of us. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me, especially with some of the issues that are not really complete tonight. I'd be much more comfortable uh, looking at it as incomplete tonight and covering the completeness and the final review at the next meeting. Well, do I have a motion then on that? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer the following motion. <clears throat> For the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted, the application of K&K &K Realty for minor subdivision review of Golden Ridge Lane, a three-lot subdivision located off Bowery Beach Road, be deemed incomplete. <clears throat> motion made. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? <clears throat> okay. Um, so we will review again completeness at the next meeting. We do. We should talk about whether we want a public hearing and or a site walk, and if so, I think, I think a site walk is critical. But I'm reluctant to go out there and look until we know what plans we're reviewing. I think the difficulty becomes the weather, though. If we're going to roll this over till December, and we're waiting for the plans, we may lose the opportunity to see what we want to see. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure we can't do a site walk right. um, without the plans. I mean, we would see what we were looking for, and then obviously we'd have to interpret that in, in light of the plans. I, I don't know if I, think I don't want to wait to, to push it off another month. You don't want you? No, I mean, I certainly don't think it's necessary right. to wait an extra meeting to, to get to the issues of completeness and final approval. I mean, I, I, I'd like to hear from the rest of the board, but in terms of the site walk, yeah, or I, I think in consideration of the applicant, and given that we are getting towards winter, that we really should have a site walk, even if we don't have the complete plans. And when we do have one, I would like to perhaps request that somebody from the Conservation Commission joins us. Yeah, that's so good. we can and actually look at the site with the Conservation Commission and with the applicant and see what the questions are. And also to point out, I'm still not quite sure where the, build, where the building envelope is, and I think you need to have perhaps something close so we can look at that too when we're there sure. because of the wetlands and the, and the effect they might have. Mm -hmm. If I might add too, it would be very helpful if between now and whenever the site walk is scheduled, you can continue working with the town staff to resolve as many of the issues of completeness that were identified. So even if we don't have a final package at the next meeting, we've got you know something that's as formal as it can be, given whatever the timing allows, uh, to give us a better view of where things are going to be heading with the final application. Um, well, from what I'm hearing, I, and I would agree, I think a site walk's necessary when uh, <laughs> now the tough question. Yeah. I hope he's working next Thursday. Okay. When do we want to do this? Yes, I know. Thanksgiving is a no, holiday. Just, yeah. um, I don't have any suggestions. Weekend, early morning. Saturday morning, some Saturday. I don't have far to go. Um, next Saturday is obviously out. Uh, how about the fourth Saturday, Saturday morning? morning? The fourth Saturday after Thanksgiving, meaning the week after Thanksgiving. Right. Uh, it's going to do me a lot of good. I'm looking at Maureen's book, so. <laughs> Glad she's free. It doesn't do me a lot of good. Uh, December fourth. That's a. Oh no. That's six. I'm sorry, sixth. My mistake. Six. December sixth. Is that all right? Works for me, Mr. Jim. Only if it's early. Early. Yeah. yeah. We're inviting people in to make candy canes that day. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to get in the way of that. Um, <laughs> it's eight o'clock too early. No, that, that's what I was. Oh. 
8 o'clock on the 6th. Jim, is that work for you? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, and can you ask someone from the Conservation Commission? Meet at uh, Kettle Cove Dairy Bar parking lot. <laughs> you want to park right on Golden Ridge. Yeah, you can drive right up the lane. Can you? Okay. Can you Assuming we don't have snow between now and then. Yes. I'm sorry? Uh, Maureen's going to send an email to remind me and everyone <laughs> of the date and time. Um, also, we, is it everyone's desire to also have a public hearing? Oh, yes. Excuse me. You usually don't schedule a public hearing until you've complete. got a complete application. Correct. Well, if we think optimistically that the next meeting would be both complete yeah, I, and Yeah, I know we usually parents. don't, but if we don't, then we're going to be putting this off two months, and I don't think that's necessary, so... Well, I think if, there, if there's no response to the public hearing, and we know that, then we can go ahead with the... Well, I would say, let, let's go ahead and schedule the public That's hearing. Saying, if if it's incomplete at that point, then obviously we won't have a public hearing, but I, I think the chances are much remote. Are remote, and therefore we could have the public hearing instead of waiting yet another no, I period. Agree. Okay. Is there anything else? I... I I'm afraid to open a can of worms here with this easement and moving it, but I'm, I'm trying to understand um, some of the legal issues with this easement. Is is this something that we, and I, and I think this is something the applicant alluded to a few minutes ago, do we make that decision? It seems to me if, if this is a legal right the town has, and ultimately the council would have to vote on that issue. Maybe Maureen has something to clarify. The newsletter actually yeah. says that. Be because it's an existing easement, right. yes, the council would have final authority over it. Right. However, anytime you review a development, sure. you get easements that have to be finally accepted by the council. Right. And I've already asked the manager if he thought there would be, if he wanted to handle this differently or if he wanted to handle it like we handle everything. And he said, handle it the way we usually do, which is that you would, as a board, make a recommendation. Okay. And the final decision would be made by the council after the board has finished its review. Okay. So, so basically, the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board come to a point with the council. So if there was some disparity in recommendations, which there may or may not be, the council would be the ultimate yes. arbiter of that. And, and to bounce on that, off that comment, I, I would see this as somewhat different than the usual, okay, we need this easement to make the subdivision work. It's we're taking away an existing one and, and adding it to an, ex, an approval. And the latter step is what we do all the time, but the former is the one that makes me pause to say, wait a minute here. I, I don't think we certainly don't have that authority to do that. No, we don't. Uh, and is it, does that clarify some of the issues you, or the direction you've been going, hearing? Uh, a little bit, yes. Do you have any, if with the board, with the chair's pleasure, I'm just, are there, is, are there any other things that, as far as that issue goes, that you want us, us to clarify before the site walk in? I mean, I, I guess I want all these issues crystallized when we're walking around out there so that we understand who's doing what, both from the applicant side and from the town side. What I understand is that, uh, what I've understood is that, uh, first of all, all the, uh, uh, the issues that the <coughs> Conservation Commission brings up here, we've already gone on public record with the Conservation Commission to saying that absolutely we're going to do everything that they've uh, submitted here. But I understood that the Planning Board, and please correct me if I'm wrong, has to make the decision as to whether or not this is even a viable move. So rather than go ahead and actually put this as a, on the plan relative to the approval of the subdivision, this meaning all these conditions regarding the Greenbelt, Planning Board needs to determine whether or not this is a viable move. At that point, we will then submit either through the Conservation Commission or directly to the Planning Board uh, so that they can then review that as a Planning Board item. The specifics that we have already, again, gone on record saying that we will do, i.e., these uh, um, small fence locations uh, showing the, uh, the actual location of the trail itself. Uh, the easement is what we're looking at. We've already told the Commission that the trail, where the trail will be, and it will be there. But is that an issue for the planning board, or is the actual relocation of the easement what we're looking at? That is what I looked at, or what we looked at, as far as the planning board issues are concerned. 
So I'm getting a little bit of mixed signal here. No, it seems to me, and I don't want to cut you off if you're not finished, but it seems to me we need to see all that on the plan as part of our review process. Am I, am I missing something there? I mean, I, so I guess I'm suggesting as part of your resubmission, you want to, if you've agreed, especially if you've agreed to all those terms with the Conservation Commission, show it on the plan so that we can evaluate it as a planning issue. Is that is that accurate? That's and that, and I want to see that. I'm I'm hoping to see that, or at least get some feedback that that's what we're looking at when we walk out there. Sure. Uh, because from what I'm seeing, there isn't. It isn't on there yet, and I, maybe that's just a question of logistics. Well, it doesn't exist yet. No. Right. Harbor. Have you seen the memo from the Conservation Commission? Yes, Marine just came to me this evening. Have you had a chance to read it yet? Just briefly, yes. Okay, because there seems to be some, just so that we're all prepared, there seems to be some difference of opinion between you yep. and your client and the Conservation Commission. That's why I think it's critical that we all go out there together and take it. Sure, yeah, I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, I won't belabor the point by any means, but uh, one of the things that I think seems to be throwing some people off is the, the uniform width of this easement at 18 feet is going to go into a portion of what we have designed or redesigned as the roadway just because of its uniform width. The actual pathway itself is only going to be three or four feet wide. It doesn't have anything to do with crossing, with one exception, uh, the drainage areas. The drainage areas are all adjacent to the road have nothing to do with the actual uh, pathway for the green belt. Uh, plantings, defense locations, everything is all set. I'd love to be able to show that to you if that's proposal at this point in time for the planning board. Well, Jim, I, not to belabor the issue any further, but the, the issue that the planning board, the way I look at it as a planning board member is that that if, if you had an issue with a fire chief he tell you how to lay it out on your plan. You lay it out that way. Then it's easy for us because we're not. We depend on that. We depend on the town engineer, engineer, and I think we also depend on the conservation commission because they're the ones that are taking charge of the green belt. So, if that information's on the drawing, it's much easier for me. If you deal with the conservation commission, I think it's easier for all of us to handle this. And and if if you have a problem with something that 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 they propose, and maybe you can bring it up with us, but I think the Conservation Commission is the people you should be dealing with, the same as you'd go to the fire chief or the town engineer or public works directors. Sure, I mean, we have met with the commission yeah. three times yeah. to be able to get that information. That's good. And I'd be very happy to show And this new memo may help you yes. put this all together. Well, considering the fact that since we've deemed it incomplete, we're not supposed to discuss any substantive issues, um, are there any other questions? <laughs> nice question if the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Absolutely. Anyone I'll wish I'll to second that, that one? <laughs> All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.